I would like to personally thank you for virtually joining us on campus in the Lou Center for the Visual Arts. Currently on display here in the lobby and open to enrolled students, faculty, and staff is the Unity Flag Project. This project was organized in anticipation of the upcoming presidential debate on October 22nd and invited creatives from all over the United States to make a unity flag in order to promote empathy for bipartisanship in a time of heightened emotion and political unrest. The resulting exhibition is powerful, overwhelmed by honest self-expression, and ultimately demonstrates a drive towards social progress. At this time, I would like to allow the project's founder to speak more specifically to the origins of this project and how it evolved through the recent summer of 2020. Dr. Megan Brady Nelson serves Belmont University's Watkins College of Art as Assistant Professor of Art and Program Director of Fine Arts. A creative herself, this has certainly become a passion project that has allowed her to provide a safe space for constructive discourse. Time permitting, we will address questions following this presentation. Questions and comments may be submitted through Zoom's chat box feature at any time. Hello, I am Megan Brady Nelson, and I'm speaking to you live from Belmont University in Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you, Katie, for that warm introduction, and thank you for your support with this project. We are so glad you could join us for this special event as part of Belmont University's Ideas of America programming to support the presidential debate on our campus. Before I go any further, let me take a moment to thank our debate sponsors, particularly HCA Healthcare, the City of Nashville, the Nashville Convention and Visitors Corporation, and the Ryman Hospitality Properties. We are so grateful to them and the many other sponsors you'll find at BelmontDebate2020.com for making events like this possible. The Unity Flags are currently on display in the lobby of the Watkins College of Art, the Lou Center for Visual Arts at Belmont University. The flags represent a unification of our nation's community coming together in a time of political unrest through the process of collaborative art making. The overarching idea of this project is to build purple empathy through the visual arts. Democrats are often associated with the color blue and Republicans the color red. When I speak of the color purple in regards to politics, I am not suggesting a blending or changing of these colors. I am suggesting the need to create space in which a balance of commonalities and differences can be shared through bipartisan discourse. Therefore, the intention of creating spaces for purple empathy is not a true blending of red and blue. For this collaborative experience, the formation of purple is an optical blending of blue and red coming together to engage in civil bipartisan discourse through the visual arts. This all started the day of America's last presidential election, November 8, 2016. I was teaching at a state school down the road when I walked into my 80 student section of the art experience. I found the class deeply, deeply divided, engaged in heated debate over the day's election. After I settled the class down, one student asked for my opinion, saying, how can we talk about anything else when it's all anyone is thinking about? This became an opportunity to focus on the visual we all had been exposed to leading up to the election, the visual that had increased our nation's divide. The visual culture of our contemporary elections are saturated with images. Using social media and different search engines, I went down the multiple rabbit holes of our deeply divided echo chambers. This provided me the opportunity to gather the saturation of images that has been fed to us depending on our political affiliations. Using these images, all created to influence us, I explored the ways critical visual literacy can engage students in discourse towards bipartisan discourse and empathy. If empathy is the action of understanding, being aware of, being sensitive to, and vicariously experiencing the feelings, thoughts, and experience of another, then purple empathy is the action of understanding 
being aware of, being sensitive to, and vicariously experiencing the feelings, thoughts, and experiences of another's political views, another's political experiences, another's political opinions, political understandings, political intentions, and political decisions. By providing a safe and brave space for bipartisan discourse, the red and blue students gain purple empathy by sharing, by listening, and by hearing one another. But in order for purple empathy to grow stronger and become far reaching, I and others must continue to reflexively attempt such processes. I have continued to explore such processes as I conduct visual research and develop curriculum centered on the ways purple empathy can grow. But as an active artist, I do some of my best thinking with a paintbrush in my hand. These are the first unity flags I created as I was preparing for the 2019 academic year. Love thy neighbor on the left and purple empathy on the right. When Belmont announced that we would be honored to host the final debate of the 2020 presidential election, all of our colleges were asked to propose unique ideas how we could engage our students and greater community in the process of democracy. This was the conception of the Unity Flag Project. And I wanna say thank you once again to Belmont for your support and believing in this project. In the summer of 2020, I reached out to creators from all over the United States. As a collective, the Unity Flag creators represent the diversity of our nation in regards to culture, ethnicity, race, gender, age, profession, and political affiliations. I cast a wide net with the following statement. Quote, I am working on a national project called Unity Flags, and my hope is you will represent your state. I would send you a care package with all the materials, canvas, paint, brushes, to create an American flag in your own way, and you are welcome to use other colors and or materials. You could do it with other artists, your family, friends, students are alone, however you are COVID-19 comfortable. You can get creative with the design or paint it to look exactly like Old Glory. It can also have a state spin on it, but that is not required. The idea is to build purple empathy through the visual arts. The only ask is that it not be divisive. It should promote unity and empathy for our country. This was the response I heard from people all over the nation. Two words, I'm in. In a year of social distancing and division, I think many of us are looking for ways to connect. I had the extreme honor of unrolling each unity flag and viewing them first as they arrived on Belmont University's campus. As I viewed them, I became overwhelmed with a feeling of connection and community deeper than I've ever experienced through collaborative art making. It is obvious that every unity flag creator dedicated many, many hours to their design and process of making. For this, I am deeply humbled and inspired as an artist and as an American. Now let's look closer at some of the unity flags and hear from some of the creators. This beautiful interactive work called Collective Reflection was created in the state of Oregon. Its creators, Amy and Jeff Piet, have recorded something for us to hear. Hello, my name is Amy Pettit. And I'm Jeff Pettit. And together we created the unity flag for the state of Oregon. We chose to convey unity and empathy through our design and material choices. We used a reflective and iridescent vinyl so that the viewer becomes an active participant in the work. The perception of the piece changes depending on the angle at which it's seen. So the colors shift and the clarity changes as you consider it from many viewpoints. The pattern references a traditional flag where the elements are repeated and interlaced. We hope that a viewer sees themselves reflected back as part of a larger system, both as an individual and entwined in society. Thank you for taking the time to think about how many viewpoints make up the fabric of a community. Collective reflection. Thank you, Amy and Jeff. And to all the viewers at home, please know that this static image does not do justice to the beautiful interactive reflective 
quality of this unity flag. If you see in the middle, that is actually my outline of standing in front of it. From the Pacific Northwest to the beautiful shores of the Atlantic, this unity flag, titled A Beacon of Hope, was collaboratively created at the Robert Newsom Center at Virginia Wesleyan University. Here is Dr. Craig Wansick to tell us more. My name is Craig Walsink. I'm director of the Robert Nussbaum Center at Virginia Wesleyan University. Our center focuses on diversity and on dialogue. Key to our flag is a lighthouse. It, that represents our location in the southeastern part of Virginia. The images of hearts on our flag allude to the Commonwealth's motto, which is Virginia is for lovers which also recognizes Virginia as welcoming and inclusive. Lighthouses have traditionally served as guides for ships navigating turbulent seas. They are also symbols of hope illuminating the darkness. The United States has been a beacon of hope for so many around the world. May we remain vigilant in uniting around a vision for a more perfect union, a union in which equality and justice ring true for all. A beacon of hope. Thank you to Craig and his collaborative artists at the Virginia Wesleyan University. Thank you for creating this illuminating symbol of hope. This unity flag was designed by one of our youngest unity flag creators, Erko, who turned five years old last week. Happy birthday. Erko's mother is an art professor and early childhood scholar at the Rhode Island School of Design. And together they explored the notion of empathy by focusing on the ideas of love and community. Hi, I'm Dr. Shauna Singwamani from the Rhode Island School of Design. And I worked with my son, Aiko, to create the flag um, for the state of Rhode Island. So I recorded a little video with Aiko where he had the opportunity to tell everybody about his flag. So enjoy. So I thought it was cemetery. It's it's the cemetery was a part, is a part of our neighborhood. And that's where we like to go to ride our bikes. What else do we do over there? We walk with snakes. Mm -hmm. And we ride our scooters. We ride our scooters. We take our dog for a walk in that yeah. neighborhood. We also chose specific colors for our flag. Why did we, what color did we use for the background, Aiko? Blue. Why did we use blue for the background? It's because we have a lot of water in Rhode Island. Right, good. What other colors did you choose? Pink, purple, orange, blue, green, hearts. Why did you want hearts? It's because I want... You want to let them know what? how much you love your cousins and how much we love our family, right? And you chose, rain why did you choose rainbow colors? It's because we sometimes have rainbows. Great. Is there anything else you want to say about your flag? No. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Aiko. Thank you for reminding us how love, family, and community center us all. And happy fifth birthday. Strength and Unity was designed by nine-year-old Collins Meldahl of Seattle, Washington. Collins wanted to create a flag that represents her diverse community in a way that would bring people together. Here we see 50 unique fingerprints forming the stars in each participant's signature. Behind this visual are the numerous American narratives shared in the flag's collaborative creative process.
I spend time thinking about this and how to represent my community and the people that surround me and how to do it in a way that would bring us all together. This was tricky during COVID, but I felt it was important to show how a community could still come together, no matter who they are or what they believe, to show support for each other during these trying times. This project has demonstrated to me that our country and my community is made up of people with so many different backgrounds who all have so many different beliefs. However, just by looking at the names and fingerprints on my flag, you wouldn't know what each person looked like, what, where they are from, how old they are, or what they believe in. Yet, each person on this flag represents the idea of that we are all important and that we all have a place in this country and that they're in strength and unity. Thank you for letting me participate in this project. Thank you, Collins, for taking the time to bring together so many in your community and for showing us that there is strength and unity. And also thank you for publishing an article about this in your local Seattle community. This unity flag, American Synodic, Synodic, excuse me, was created right here in Tennessee by Belmont studio major, Lane Carnell. This unity flag with liberty and justice for all was also created by a Belmont artist, art education major, Lauren Dingman. Here they are together on Belmont's campus talking about their unity flags. Okay. Hi, my name is Lane Cornell and I'm from Bristol, Tennessee and I'm a studio artist. And my name's Lauren Dingman. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia and I'm an art educator. And my flag is called the American Synecdoche and it celebrates the diversity of the American culture as well as calling into attention the need for us to work to make this country a more equal and just place. Um, and my piece is called For Liberty and Justice for All and it refers to the students of America at this time um, and seeks to make students really feel known and that their values and beliefs matter. And it was inspired mostly off of the Pledge of Allegiance that many public school students speak every morning of their um, educational career. Um, and at its heart, it's a celebration of our future leaders of America and the opportunities and potential that they have to better our nation. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you both. Thank you, Lane. Thank you for reminding us that we have to work to create a place where love and compassion are our priority. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you for creating a tribute to the youth and students of America. Now we go to Florida, where this incredible unity flag was created. For the inception of this design, Dr. Sarah Scott Shields conducted research into numerous, numerous key figures in Florida's state history. Not only is this flag beautiful in its visual construction, it is handmade. It invites you to look closely and to learn a little bit about the people in Florida that have worked to make a difference in our country. My name is Sarah Scott Shields and I'm here in Tallahassee, Florida. I'm an associate professor at Florida State University and I did the unity flag representing the beautiful state of Florida. When I made my flag, I thought a lot about who or what I could depict in its stars and stripes. And I made the decision that I was gonna do some research about the indigenous people of Florida, people in Florida that contributed to the civil rights movement in both our state and across our country, and also the women in Florida that contributed to women's right to vote. So when I did the research, I learned as much as I could about these people, created a small portrait in each of the stars, and then included a little bit of information about them in the stripes in hopes that by looking at the flag, you might be inspired to learn more about the people that have helped you get to where you are and have made it so that we all can vote and have our voice heard in this year's election. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for showing us that one person's work can make a difference in society 
and for reminding us that we all have the potential to join the ranks of greatness through our civic responsibility to others. We now travel west to Wyoming, the equality state, where Principal Tanya Wall and art educator Jordan Sawyer at Spring, Key, excuse me, Spring Creek Elementary School show us that kindness, kindness is most important. Hi, I'm Tanya Wall. I'm representing the state of Wyoming. And I am Jordan Sauer, and our piece is entitled The World Needs More Kindness, and this is a play on UW's theme, The World Needs More Cowboys. The Wyoming State Code of Ethics includes the following principles. Live each day with courage. Take pride in your work. Always finish what you start. Do what has to be done. Be tough but fair. When you make a promise, keep it. Ride for the brand. Talk less and say more. Remember that some things aren't for sale and know where to draw the line. We believe that kindness, courage, and optimism are traits we should all have in this current time and climate in order to make a positive impact on humanity. Follow the code of ethics, be kind, and do your part in the world. We chose the colors purple because we want both parties, red and blue, to bind and unite and be We have 50 hearts in the corner of our flag that represents each state of the union. And we also have our famous bucking horse, which is a state symbol of our great state of Wyoming that represents the cowboy ethics. Kindness. Kindness, courage, and optimism. Thank you, Tanya and Jordan, for this wonderful Unity Flag. And thank you both for your service as educators in these very trying times. From Wyoming to New York, New York, Tara Woods, a recent Belmont alum, who now teaches high school, high school art education here in Nashville, Tennessee, reminds us that the home state we grew up in always stays close to our heart. I'm Tara Woods and I'm a visual arts teacher in Nashville, Tennessee, but I'm originally from New York and represented New York in the Unity Flag Project. I incorporated the I Heart New York design into my flag because I've always been really proud of New York and how New Yorkers come together in times of hardship and tragedy. And if you are able to and register to vote, please vote in the upcoming election. <laughs> Thank you, Tara. Thank you for this heartfelt design. And please know that your Belmont family is thinking of you and cheering you on in this challenging first year of teaching. This Maryland unity flag titled These Truths was collaboratively created in Baltimore and serves as a reminder and re-examination of who we are as Americans. Greetings from Baltimore. My name is Dr. Kate Collins and I'm an assistant professor at Towson University. I created this flag with two other artists, Anna Maria Economo and Laverne Myers Bond. Our flag is from the state of Maryland. And with our flag, we chose to promote unity and empathy by going back to all the founding documents of our nation that we so often reference, whether we are Democrats or Republicans, independents or otherwise, to remind us of who we are and the things we hold true as a nation. It's our hope that remembering those core values can unite us. With our overall design, we wanted to capture Jimmy Carter's notion of the United States as a beautiful mosaic. With the text we included, we focused on immigrants as a big part of that beautiful mosaic because we are a nation of immigrants. But in recent years, we fear that's been forgotten. And empathy for the new immigrants who seek to pursue the American dream the same way so many of our families and ancestors did has fallen away. We seek to revitalize that sense of empathy because immigrants are vital to every sector of our society. They bring richness and diversity of ideas and cultures, traditions and languages that make this great nation. 
and beyond immigrants. We believe all facets of diversity add to the vitality of our nation. So with the symbols in our field of blue, we chose to honor and celebrate all of that as well. These truths. Thank you, Kate, and thank you to your collabor collaborative team. Um, thank you to your collaboration of artists and for your visual reminder that as a nation, we are a nation of immigrants. From Baltimore to California, this unity flag is composed of stars of different skin tones and stripes representing diversity in race, gender, socioeconomic status, immigration status, and sexual orientation. Alexandra shows us that faith, faith should go hand in hand with equality. Hi, my name is Alexandra Muddle and I am representing the state of California. The art piece that I created is called One Nation Under God. I titled the art piece that because to me unity and having empathy for one another comes from being one with God and truly knowing who he is, the creator of our universe. Um, when we can have empathy for one another regardless of race, economic status, gender, sexual orientation, immigration status, that's when we can truly um, just be united. And that is only through God are we gonna have that. Um, truly these words, one nation under God, they are written in the Pledge of Allegiance that if you grow up going to schools in the United States, we say this in our Pledge of Allegiance every day. So how can we be a nation that truly exemplifies that? Um, unity, having empathy for, for one another, truly comes from living those words, one nation under God. Thank you, Alexandra. Thank you for reminding us that with faith, we don't always have to agree, but we should strive to have empathy for one another. From the Golden Gate Bridge to the cornfields of Ohio, this colorful unity flag was created by the wonderful Dr. Mindy Rhodes. It celebrates opportunities for unity and inclusion. Hi, I'm Mindy Rhodes. I'm coming to you from the great state of Ohio, where I'm an associate professor at the Ohio State University in our Department of Teaching and Learning. I'm honored to be included in the artists contributing flags to this Unity Flag Project in an effort to promote bipartisanship in our country. I hope that my flag represents my belief in the power of this country in our diversity and in our multipleness. In my, fl my flag, I start with multiple layers of color. I do layers of layers, and then increasingly, I try to bring those layers into order, into a manageable order, but one where this diversity and the previous layers still show through and hopefully they show through in all their beauty because I believe that we can be better if we work together. Thank you Mindy. Thank you for reminding us how important opportunities of community connection and celebrations of inclusion all are for all Americans. This unity flag traveled all the way from Anchorage, Alaska, where contemporary artist Bonnie Gaither focused on celebration as a form of unity. Hi, I'm Bonnie Gaither. I am an Alaskan artist. Um, I've been in Alaska for the last 50 years, and I did the flag called Confetti Flag. I made the stars into circles because circles are usually a sign of unity and continuity. And I splattered different colors, um, making it look like confetti because we use confetti when we celebrate. And the different colors represent different symbols of ethnicity, organizations, diseases. And that is what America is. It's a combination of different colors, different things. Thank you, Bonnie. 
Thank you for sharing your beautiful confetti celebration with all of us. Inspired by a cross country road trip, Dr. Amanda Alexander from Texas focuses our attention to conservation of wild spaces that make our nation so breathtaking. Hello, my name is Amanda Alexander. I'm a teacher and professor at the University of Texas Arlington, and my Unity Flag Project was representing the state of Texas. My flag's title was named U.S. Symbols, which was inspired by national parks, historic landmarks, and cultural sites that I was able to visit on a cross-country road trip last summer, summer of 2019. On that trip, I was able to start in northern Indiana and traveled through Illinois, Wisconsin, Minnesota, South Dakota, Montana, Washington, all the way up to Vancouver, BC. And then I traveled back down through Washington, Oregon, California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, all the way back to my home in Dallas, Texas. Um, on that trip, I was able to see lots and lots of different spaces and lands across the country. Um, it gave me a, more of an appreciation for sustainability in our natural habitats, especially when I have in mind about climate change and destruction of the environment. I feel very strongly about these topics and I feel that on that trip, I was able to see some of that destruction, but also some of the ways in which the United States has been able to conserve our natural habitats. And personally, I want that to continue. So this year, more than ever before, I feel it's very important to go vote. Um, we have a lot of things on the table that we need to vote for. So I feel like go vote. And I was very happy and proud to be a part of the Unity Project, which represented the state of Texas. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you for centering your unity flag on American national forests, parks, and wilderness. We end our national tour in New Mexico with Dr. Justin Makinson's item number 1776-1103-2020. Hello, hola. Uh, my name is Justin Makinson. I'm a professor of art education at the University of New Mexico. My unity flag, uh, which is called item number 1776-1103-2020, was created right here in New Mexico and is intended as part of a discussion of commercial interests in politics, as well as the objectification and dehumanization uh, that happens when we treat people like consumers or data points or target demographics. This message uh, shows up in the treatment of the stripes as a UPC code, uh, as well as in the text that's in the star field and in the numbers in the code itself. Uh, 1776 representing the birth of the nation and the beginning of the American dream and the beginning of the American promise. 2020 representing hopefully a return to rational thinking, forward thinking and humane thinking. Please use your vote this November. It's incredibly important. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Thank you for this power, powerful, powerful visual, reminding us that our election process is a time to engage in meaningful civil discourse, and most importantly, to exercise the right to vote. Each unity flag is distinctive in its visual meaning, and as a collective, they help us to understand, become aware of, and sensitive to vicariously experiencing bipartisan discourse. On the eve of the unity flag install, this collective visual inspired me to consider once again what I feel is most critical at this important time in American history. The list is long, but one unifying action is most important, and that is to vote. And this is my unity flag. You can simply search, I will vote, or go to the website seen here. Please plan your vote, engage in your democracy. Your vote, your vote is your voice. Most importantly, I wanna extend a heartfelt thank you to all, all the Unity Flag creators. We have only gotten to hear from a few to this evening. Here you see images from a flag on the top left from Michigan, in the middle, middle top from Arizona, the top right from Connecticut, 
the bottom right from Illinois, the middle bottom from Massachusetts, and the bottom left from Nebraska. They are all incredible in their visual, and they all have wonderful stories that go along with them. Please go to the unityflagproject.com website. Here you can spend time with each unity flag and the corresponding artist statement. A big, big thank you to Belmont design student, Abraham Mass for creating this incredible website. And also to Doug Regan for designing the Unity Flag logo. 2020 has been a year that has brought hardship and division, but the efforts of each Unity Flag creator in this project work to counterbalance this. I will forever be grateful for your artistry that seeks to build empathy and unity for our country. Thank you. And now I'd like to open it up for questions. Absolutely. So thank you very much, Megan, for that wonderful presentation on the project. Again, I'd like to remind our participants to please submit any questions or comments into the Q&A feature um, in, in the Zoom toolbar at the bottom of your screen. To get us started, Megan, I'd like to ask you, um, you, you ask your creators to avoid divisiveness in their flags as they prepared the, um, their exploration uh, of, of unity. Can you elaborate a bit more on what you meant by that? Division, yes. Uh, that was the one ask, that it not be divisive. Um, and what I meant by that is that it, uh, it not cause hostility and it's certainly not instill violence. Um, it's a big ask, but it's also quite a simple ask. Uh, we all have very, very strong opinions at this time. Um, and the, the challenge of this Unity Flag project was to create a visual that could actually bring people into the conversation. Uh, creating a visual that uh, speaks strongly, but doesn't yell, um, that has an opinion, but doesn't force to put yours upon it. Um, and the ultimate is to uh, create bipartisan discourse. And that's what it means by to be non-divisive, at least for this project. What are your wildest ambitions for this project? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, truly, I, I hope that people are inspired to make their own. Whether they make it at home on a piece of paper and they never show it to anyone, um, or whether they or a teacher and they make it with their students, that be kindergarten or seniors in high school. Um, I think the visual of our flag is, um, is something that we all can relate to. I think at the times when we have national disasters, we see the images of um, homes on the West Coast that have been burned or homes that have been hurt by hurricanes and we see an image of a flag standing. The flag is a unifying image and using it as a way to create more unity, opening it up for discussion um, in a respectful manner. Um, so to go back to your original question, my hope is that this project doesn't end this year and doesn't end today and it doesn't end at the debate or election day. My hope is that people continue to create their own um, and continue to use it as a way to listen to one another and actually hear one another. It's very admirable. <laughs> Thanks. We have a student here that asks, how do you find ways to be more compassionate and magnanimous when there is so much division within our country? Deep breaths. <laughs> um, I think it's real easy to wake up every day and um, look at your phone and read through the news and uh, get quite angry or get quite polarized. Uh, and it, you can go down that hole quite quickly. Um, what you actually can't, it takes a bit of effort, but to wake up and to think about how you are going to tackle the day with kindness, tackle the day by listening a little bit more each time. Um, and when I say listening, I mean actually hearing, uh, actually trying to understand the exact opposite of the way you see it. Because if we actually try and understand the exact opposite of the way you see it, I think we'll start to find that there is, uh, the center is much larger than we actually believe. Um, and when we humanize it, 
when we actually have a conversation with someone who sees so differently than us, that's where compassion grows because you care about that person when you take the time to have a conversation with them. And it's, it's very easy to, to put labels and uh, to, to grow divisive that way. But when you uh, form relationships with people that think the exact opposite of you, you're able to have that compassion grow within you. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Another student asks if this is the first project you've ever initiated on such a grand scale. I know that your initial plans for this project were clearly stifled with the oncoming of COVID and the global pandemic. Um, I personally am incredibly proud and inspired by what you've been able to accomplish over this time. But um, is this the first project on, that you've, you've engaged in on such a large scale? Yeah, the simple answer is yes. I've done collaborative work for a bit of time now. Um, and I've done collaborative work with more people at once, but I've never done collaborative work that reaches across such a far range. Uh, many of these Unity Flag creators, I've never met physically. Actually, many of them I've never even spoken with. We have conversed uh, digitally, uh, virtually. Um, and I honestly think one of the good outcomes of COVID was the way in which this project changed. It, it had initially, uh, its initial aesthetic looks are quite different, um, but the fact that COVID happened and we were all thrown into um, social distancing and thrown into social isolation, I think that perhaps this project was a way for people to connect with others. Um, I, I want to believe that people would have done this without COVID, but I have a feeling that people were yearning for a connection at this time. Um, so to answer the question, no, I've never done something this large. And uh, it's been incredibly, uh, I think the word is humbling. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, I'm incredibly thankful to Belmont for supporting this because um, without them, this would not have happened. And all the people that helped me, you, Katie, uh, Abraham, James, Michelle, uh, um, Emily, Emily, who spent so much time with me, Nikki in the, the FedEx department, we put all those tubes together. And then when the tubes opened in transit and we had to resend things, um, to have something like this happen, it is not a one person task. You need a strong team and you need a team who believes in you. So thank you to everyone. This is a great follow-up question to that. Would you ever pursue another widespread project like this? What are some of the benefits you experienced and what were some of perhaps the problems or challenges that you ran into other than the obvious? <laughs> um, yes, very much so, yes. Uh, uh, I wanna do this again. I wanna do this on a different scale. I wanna do this outside of an election year. Um, I've worked this into the curriculum that I'm working on with my art education students with hopes by the time the election comes up again, they will have graduated and they will be in their own classrooms. Maybe they'll be here in Nashville, maybe they won't. Maybe they will be all over the United States. And my hope is that perhaps we can do this again um, and that they can do it with students. Uh, yes, I'd like to do this every election year and I'd like to do it outside of the election year. Um, I think a lot of times we focus on politics and it's such a heated time and, and it's compressed down when actually it should be an everyday occurrence. It should happen every month of the year. It should be something that as Americans we are naturally thinking about and naturally um, conversating about. Do you see this project transcending America as a nation with regard to the respect of the flag and, and kind of approaching this similar concept, but from a completely different national perspective? That would be, if, if there's a student that's asking that, make sure that student sends me an email because that sounds awesome. Um, yes, I could see how that could happen, how we could make this an international idea. Uh, I'd have to think about that before I could say exactly what it would look like. I do know that America, our flag has a, has a stronger visual than some countries. Many countries, their flag is as strong a visual, but I will say the American flag is one that is probably recognized in the top 10 across the whole world. There is something to the stars 
and stripes and the old glory um, and the history of it and the strength that it shows. Um, but yes, I would love to pursue the idea of going global with this and what that could look like. That'd be amazing. We have another question asking, will these flags be on display after the election? Um, and is there a way to showcase them afterwards to keep the discussion going? Yes. So physically, yes, they will be on display after the election. Um, but for there are only uh, there's a limited amount of people that are here on campus in Nashville and Tennessee. Hence why we did the, the, um, the website, unityflagproject.com. That, that website is there so that it not only becomes a space for the flags to be archived, but so that it can be far reaching, so that it can be used all across the nation, the world by educators, artists, people, uh, just wanting to look at them. Um, but if you are a student here on campus, walk on down, come visit, come knock on my door. I'd love to talk to you about them in person with a mask on. And finally, we have more of a comment than a question. Thank you so much. More, um, again, more of a comment. But this is such an important exhibition during these times, and we all appreciate your hard work and effort put forth. Thank you. And I think um, if that comes from myself as well, um, and, and I think all of us that get to experience these flags on a daily basis here in LCVA. Thank you. Another kind comment. Thank you, Megan and Katie. Remember to vote. Yes, Justin, absolutely. Um, well, I, I believe that does end our q and I want to thank you all for joining us this evening to learn more about the Unity Flag Project. Remember, if, the, you're, un, if you're unable to physically visit the show here in LCVA, um, that you can view all of these flags that you saw here tonight and more, in addition to the creator's uh, statement of intent on that website created by our student Abraham Mast. That's unityflagproject.com. Thank you all again, and I hope you have an excellent evening. Thank you. Mm -hmm.